I was having a conversation the other day with the guy that I buy my firewood from, and he had mentioned that he had had people ask him, how do I build a fire? And it occurred to me that I guess some people just don't have any idea whatsoever. Maybe you've never had a fireplace before and you just moved into a new house or somewhere that has a fireplace, or maybe you already have a fireplace, but you just don't use it because you have no idea how to get a good fire going. And let me tell you, lighter fluid is not the way to go. There are three key factors to starting a nice roaring fire. First, the size of the wood you use to start the fire. You can't try and start a fire with huge logs right off the bat. You have to start small and build up gradually. Second, the wood must be seasoned and dry. You can't cut down a living tree one day and build a fire with it the next. It has to be split and stacked somewhere dry for at least a year to burn really well. One way to tell if the wood you have is seasoned or not is to knock two pieces of it together. It should have kind of a ring to it when they're knocked together. Like the sound that uh, kids' wood blocks make when they're hit together. Unseasoned wood will just hit with a dull thud. And third, the true secret to a nice roaring fire is establishing a good hot bed of coals. Once you have a large hot bed of coals on the bottom of the fireplace underneath the wood grate, keeping the fire going is easy. Now to get the fire started, you're going to need several different sizes of wood, starting with your kindling. This is wood that's going to be the diameter of a pencil up to the diameter of maybe a broomstick. From there, you'll move up to what I would call starter logs. They're going to be about the diameter of your wrist. And from there, you're going to move up to what I would call intermediate logs that are in between the starter logs and the finished size logs that you're going to end up using, you know, just to keep the fire going throughout the day. Yes, I definitely need a new wood grate. So we're going to start off with our smallest kindling and we're going to just lay a row of it across the wood grate with about an inch space in between each piece. For the second row, we're going to stack on top of the first, but at a slight angle to the first and almost at a 45 degree. And then we'll start a third row on top of that and we're increasing the size of the wood as we build up. So we'll do another horizontal row followed by another row at a slight angle, making sure to leave adequate space in between the wood so it has room to breathe and the air and fire to circulate. And now we're ready to get it lit. And we're gonna do this using one single sheet of newspaper. If you end up having to use an entire Sunday newspaper to get the fire lit, you're doing something really, really wrong. It doesn't take that much so long as you've started off with good dry kindling, it's of the right size, and it's spaced and positioned just the way it needs to be. It's actually very easy to get the fire going. I've just taken one sheet of newspaper and ripped it up into seven or eight small pieces. And as you can see, I'm just lighting one piece at a time and sticking it underneath and not taking all the pieces, wadding them up, putting them all in at once to where I have this big inferno that lasts for all of three or four seconds and then it's gone, or I've packed it so full of newspaper that it doesn't really even light at all. It's best just to do small pieces and put them in one piece at a time until they're almost burned up and then another piece and another piece and so on. And as you can see, just after adding a few small pieces of newspaper, the fire is pretty much at this point lit. Uh, I think I just put the last piece in now and within a few seconds it will be burned up. All the newspaper is gone at this point and the fire is self-sustaining and the wood is lit. We're just going to let that burn for just two or three minutes until uh, the top bigger pieces of wood have started to turn black and it's really well lit. Now once it's gotten to that point, we're going to go ahead and move on to the size of wood that I was calling starter logs, which were uh, slightly larger than your biggest piece of kindling. They were, at, you know, the size of your wrist or even a little bit bigger than that. I stick uh, one in the back, one towards the front, and one across the top making sure to leave space in between each piece, otherwise the fire will smother itself out. 
and it's going pretty good. Once those have started to burn down after about 15 to 25 minutes, it's time to kind of give everything a good poke, uh, kind of flatten everything out and start adding on our intermediate size logs, which are just the size down from what your final logs that you're just going to keep the fire going throughout the day. And now I'm adding the first of the larger, what I would call intermediate size logs to the top. We're going to let that burn down just for 15 or 20 minutes. And from time to time, you will need to kind of poke at things and keep the wood evenly spaced. You want the wood to be so close together that it actually helps each other burn. Uh, you, you don't want it so close together, though, that it actually smothers one another. And you also don't want so much space in between the logs that you basically just have individual burning logs. Now we're finally starting to get to the point that we're getting the results that we want. And we're, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there, we're starting to get a, or at least the beginnings of a hot bed of coals underneath the wood grate, which is, like I said from the beginning, that's what we ultimately want out of this whole process is to get that good hot bed of coals on the bottom to where the fire just will sustain itself. Going ahead and adding on another piece of the intermediate size wood. And as you can see, just before I started poking that, it looked like it was starting to die down and go away, but just rearranging the logs that were already burning to more of a flat surface and uh, breaking some of the smaller pieces up and bringing them to the middle. Once you add on uh, that next piece of wood, it doesn't take but just a few minutes to get roaring again like this. And now once that's almost burned down but still going well, we're going to poke it again and a lot of this is going to fall apart and go underneath the wood grate, which is exactly what we want. And we're getting to the point now that we can go ahead and start adding on our full size logs that we're going to continue to use for the entire duration of this fire. There's a really nice bed of hot coals underneath there now, and that is what's going to keep this thing going. The more wood you put on, uh, the more hot coals you're going to be making, and the process just keeps going and going. Uh, I've gotten to a point before where I forgot to add wood to the fire, and all I had was just that hot bed of coals, and you can still take uh, some medium-sized pieces of wood and throw on there, and in no time it will be up and going. Worst case scenario, you might just have to use some bellows or blow on the coals to, to get the, the fresh wood going. Now I'm going to just poke at this a little bit more and go ahead and add on another log. And at this point, it's exactly where it needs to be. You can see the really big hot bed of coals underneath the grate. That's exactly what we want. And so long as you just keep uh, adding wood, as necessary and making sure everything is spaced out uh, you can keep this fire going for as long as you want and you'll finally have a you know picturesque roaring fire to cozy up to on a cold winter's evening and as you've probably noticed throughout this whole process I always like to keep a piece of wood in the back another one towards the front and a third positioned on top of the bottom two at a slight angle. That seems to, to work great every time. And there you go. There is your roaring fire. Ah. Almost looks like that uh, fireplace TV channel, huh? So that does it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up. If it's helped you out, maybe, uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. There's new videos every week. And until next time, do it right, do it well, do it yourself.